Good morning. This is Mike with Writing in the Ozarks. And, well, today we're going to talk about the new infotainment center on the 2024 Street Glide, Road Glide, CVO, same models. Because, well, somebody asked me what I thought. And maybe I should share it with y'all because I know there's a lot of discussion about this. They sent me some links that uh, Volunteer Audio just did about the new stereo system and infotainment center. I know there's been people talking about how to hack it for Apple CarPlay and some bugs and other things. So let's talk about my experiences. And no, I do not own one, but I have several days of riding new 23 and a half CVOs and 2024 CVOs and street glides and road glides after going to Sturgis last year and doing demo rides, going to Vegas and riding them at the press launch. And then we went to Daytona Bike Week and I got to ride them for several days down there. Not just guided rides, but like take the bike, go ride it. So let's talk about it. Now I have a 2016 Street Glide Special and it should be no surprise to anybody who has bought a touring bike when I say this, you know, in recent years, but stock audio sucks. That hasn't changed since 2016. That was one of the first things I changed. I did it, uh, did myself a audio upgrade, uh, Polk audio. It was okay, it was not great. Uh, within a couple of years, I upgraded to Sister Sound with a two speaker system and an amp. And then I got another set of two speakers and a set of lowers. So I have four speakers up front. That thing will hurt my ears. So that is what I'm used to. So when I get on a stock bike, I expect it to suck. I mean, I've heard other audio systems that were aftermarket that I didn't think were as good as that. But my, my I guess what I'm saying, my baseline's pretty high on what I expect from audio because of what I've been listening to for five, six years now. So when I rode the stock Street Glide at Actually, let's back up. Let's talk about Sturgis last year when I rode the new CVOs. And I rode a road glide and a street glide wearing a full face helmet. And the audio on those was adequate. That was the word I would use was adequate riding at Sturgis at 55, 60 mile an hour, 35 mile an hour, etc. I could hear the stereo okay. It was not impressive, but it was not bad. Fast forward, we go to Vegas, I ride the CVO Road Glide ST on the track. I never even touched the audio on it. We were riding on a track and you quite honestly, you were focused on your riding and not on music. And, and that was okay, but I, uh, you know, I expect it to be the same pretty much as what it was in the CVO Road Glide I rode at Sturgis. Now the CVOs do have a little bit better audio system than the base Street Glide and Road Glide, or the only Street Glide and Road Glide we have in 2024 that are non-CVO models. Stock sucks. I know a lot of people are gonna say for that kind of money, it should come with a great audio system. Fact is, a lot of riders don't care about the audio system. They don't listen to music, or if they do, they listen to it inside a helmet with something like a Cardo unit. I had my Cardo unit, I use it. The Cardo unit is great, but again, it's not like the audio system on this. But a Cardo's not a $2,500 audio system with a you know 4,000 watt power system or whatever the hell it is. I mean, it's not that, but you know what I'm saying. So we go to Daytona. And I get to ride a base Street Glide 2024 model for several days, two and a half days, up and down the beach, A1A, up to St. Augustine and back. So we're getting to travel 65 mile an hour in places like that and stuff. And again, stock audio was adequate at those speeds. We did get on the interstate once just to get out and test it on the highway at 75, 80 mile an hour, you know, for 15, 20 miles as we ran back around to the speedway. and. Well, it really sucks on the interstate. It's hard to hear, especially when you're wearing a helmet and you got wind noise and all those things because the new windshield is a little lower than I would like. Personally, I can't wait till Clockworks comes out with the windshield for the Street Glide. Now, they did put me on a CBO Street Glide for a whole day and it was much more adequate. Uh, again, the word is adequate. You know, for most people, unless you're really into loud audio, the CVO audio system is good enough, but the stock system is pretty poor if you're into audio. Again, this shouldn't surprise anybody. This is not anything new. 
It's been this way for years. If you bought a bike, you're, you're gonna know that. And you're gonna know if you're into audio or not, if that matters to you. There's a lot of people who are riding around on soft tails and have no audio or poor audio because that's all you can put on a bike without a fairing. Now I have to say, the Lowrider ST audio was much better than I expected. The Rockford Fosgate system in the Lowrider ST was more than adequate for that bike. Firecracker was very impressed with it and she has an audio system that is not bad on her sport glide. So that system was much better. I rode as well. It was more than adequate for that type of bike and for that package and setup. I thought they did a really good job on that. Now I talked to Sister Sound. You guys, if you follow the channel, you know that's what I run, what I like. I saw them at Daytona and they don't have a package for the 2024s yet, but they're working on it. All of these people who put out audio systems are figuring this stuff out because we have a whole new dash in 2024 and the 2023 and a half model CVOs have them. So it's, you know, give them a second, let them get this stuff figured out. New audio systems are gonna be coming for those for people that care. My point on this video is, you know, everybody's making a big deal about stock audio sucks. That's nothing new. Now the infotainment center, is it buggy? I did experience one bug with it when I was riding it where suddenly I had no audio output whatsoever, but it looked like it was working. I mean, whether I, it didn't matter if I had it connected to my phone or if I was using the radio, the audio just did not output to the speakers no matter what I did. Turned the bike off, turned it back on. It was that way when I dropped it off with Harley Davidson, I showed it to them. They were gonna have the engineers take a look at it. I did follow up with them. They got back to me. They said there was a bug and that they were pushing out an update that they thought were gonna resolve that. They are pushing out updates to these new systems. I mean, I know some people don't like all the electronics and everything else, and I get it, but I'm a tech guy. I kind of like it, and to be honest, I think it's kind of cool now that they're having, they have a way where you can update this thing yourself without having to take it to the shop. I mean, the nearest Harley dealer for me is 80 or 100 miles, depending on which one I go to. And so going up there just to get an update installed, not something I can do after work or on my lunch break. Now that you can do it yourself, I think that's great. I think that is one of the strengths of this new system. Yes, there's some bugs. It's a new system. They're gonna figure it out and they're gonna push updates out to fix those things and you're gonna be able to do it yourself without having to take it to a shop and have a shop do it. Now I'm not saying that is all of the issues and the system is perfect. I don't own one, at least not yet, but I'm working on it. So, you know, maybe I'll have a different opinion after I get more time in the saddle. Maybe somebody else who's got one will tell me something different. But I do have a few friends that have bought them. I have a friend who bought a CBO Rogue Glide ST before I ever even made it to Vegas to the launch of it. And we've talked about his experiences with it. He had the audio issue where it didn't output once. They did an update, reset the system, pulled the power fuse or the main fuse, put it back in, no problem since. So those are my experiences from people I personally know with a new model and from what I have experienced. So for all of you who want to know what I thought about, there you go. Do I think the system is bad? No. Do I think there's going to be some bugs? Yes. If you don't want to be a beta tester, you don't want to deal with the bugs, you probably should wait a few more months, you know, but I don't think it's that big a deal personally. All right, y'all stay safe. Keep on riding. We'll see you in the next one.